It's been three weeks since this ninja foodie jewel zone came into my life. Has it been all that it was hyped up to be? Or is it just another one of those gadgets that takes up room on your worktop and doesn't live up to expectations? In this video, I'm going to show you all the features of the machine and I'm going to tell you what I've cooked in it. And I will also tell you about the game changer thing that was so good that a friend of mine rushed out and bought this model on the same day. If you're new to this channel and you want to see more reviews of products for family and home, then you could do me a massive favour by hitting the subscribe button and the notifications, which is down below. So the first thing I want to do is tackle this myth which has grown up around air fryers that in order to have one, you need to learn a whole new way of cooking and you also need to go out and buy one or maybe several of the many air fryer cookbooks which there are. You don't. It's an incredibly simple and instinctive machine to use. And although it has got a load of settings on it, which I'll talk you through in a minute, you don't actually need to learn those settings straight away. You can pretty much pick anything and the results will be fine. And then as you get used to it, you can pick a better setting to get better results. I cooked everything on the bake setting for the first week. There were no disasters. So let's have a look at the overall machine. You've got two drawers on it and they slide in and out very satisfyingly. So very easy to get in and out and they have a nice clicking sound when you return them to the correct position. Inside those drawers are two of what Ninja refers to as crisper plates. Now these crisper plates are exactly the same size and fit into either drawer. So you don't need to remember which one goes in which drawer. You can swap them over if you wish. And this is a really nice feature as well. Ninja actually sells replacements of the drawers and of the crisper plates on their website and they're not horrendously expensive. So if for any reason they get damaged, you can buy replacements, which is something I always like to see. One of the things I love about this machine is how easy the drawers are to clean. I almost look forward to cleaning them. It is so satisfying. They are coated along with the crisper plate with a non-stick coating. Now I know there are some concerns about non-stick coatings and the fact that they may be carcinogenic, but that is if they are damaged. And so as long as the coating remains intact, then you're absolutely fine. And as I mentioned earlier on, they do sell replacements of the crisper plates and the drawers. So if that's something that concerns you, you could, should they become damaged, replace them. So size wise, this is a big machine. There's no two ways about it. It's a big machine because it's replacing an even bigger machine, which is your conventional oven. So by that standard, it's actually quite small. It weighs 11 kilograms, which to give you context is around about the weight that you're allowed to take as hand luggage on an aircraft. 10 kilograms is the maximum for most airlines. So it's something that you can lift easily, but it's not something that you want to be getting in and out of a cupboard every time you use it. It needs space on your worktop. You will be using it as much as you use a kettle. So trust me, it's worth clearing the room for. A quick note for you, this air fryer is 220 volts. It's made for the UK market. It's not dual voltage and it cannot be used in the US where it's 110 voltage without a voltage converter. There are six different cooking settings on this machine, but please do not let that put you off. It isn't as complicated as it sounds. The first setting is maximum crisp, which is for frozen goods, things like chips and chicken nuggets. Then you have air fry, which is for fresh food and frozen snacks. The third setting is roast for cooking things like meat and vegetables. You have a reheat option as well for bringing food back to temperature if you just want to do it quickly. Dehydrate is great fun if you want to make your own jerky or dehydrate fruit. And you have a bake option and that's for things like brownies, cakes and cookies. If you're used cooking with an air fryer, it's understandable that you might wonder where you begin with timings and cooking settings and temperatures. 
don't overthink it. It really isn't as complicated as you might believe. So you don't need to rush off and buy a special cookery book. In the instruction booklet that comes with this machine, there is a table which lists the food types, temperatures, and times that you will cook them for. And pretty soon you will get to grips with how long it takes to cook all the major food types. And a nice feature is the fact that you can just pull the drawer out midway through cooking and have a look and see how it's progressing. One of the great functions with this machine, which beats a conventional oven hands down, is the fact that you can sync both drawers so that they finish at the same time. If you've got one thing which is going to take nine minutes to cook and another thing it's going to take 15 minutes to cook. You set them both up, press the sync button and it will hold off cooking the thing with a longer duration until it's ready to start so that they both finish at the same time. If you're going to set up your air fryer and want to have both drawers cooking at the same duration, the same cooking setting and the same temperature, there is a feature called match. If you press that, it automatically duplicates the settings that you've put into one zone onto the second zone. You might be wondering if you need accessories when you buy this machine. I know when you buy it online, they tempt you with all the different accessories and say it was bought with this or it was bought with that. The one thing you really should invest in, and it'll only cost you about five pounds, is a set of silicone tongs. And that is because, as I mentioned earlier in the video, these drawers are coated with a non-stick lining and you don't want to damage that. So for the sake of five pounds, make sure you have got some silicone tongs. You can also buy silicone baskets to put inside and they are for cooking things which are more liquid. Like for instance, if you're doing a cake or a brownie and you want something that will fit neatly inside the drawer, the silicone baskets are useful for that. And the third thing is a rack which Ninja sell on their website, which obviously is designed to exactly fit these drawers. And that is if you want to layer food in the drawer, particularly good for dehydrating, where it will allow the air to circulate and reach what's on the base plate, the crisper plate as they call it, and on that higher rack so you can get more in the drawer and get more air circulating around it. OK, so what have I actually cooked in this air fryer over the last three weeks? And the honest answer is way more than I thought I was going to cook. I have used it more than our conventional oven. And that is partly because it's quick. It's really easy to clean. And I know this may sound like a trivial thing, but it's there at the right height on the worktop. And I don't have to crawl around on the floor and take things in and out as I would normally with a conventional oven. So it's super user friendly. I have cooked in it chicken breasts and roast potatoes, chicken wings, mac and cheese, frozen chips, Portuguese custard tarts, cheese topped crumpets, fish pie, sausages, hash browns, chicken goujons, cookies, and the final thing that I cooked in the air fryer was the thing that was the game changer, which made my friend run out and buy one of these. She was on the tipping point anyway, but it was the game changer for her. And that is pan au chocolat. Now, I don't know if your household is like mine, but this is a bit of a weekend treat that we like to have. And they take ages to cook because you have to have 10 minutes to heat the oven up and then 20 minutes to cook them. And so it's 30 minutes in total. And during that time, some of the people who said they wanted one have gone off and eaten something else instead because they got bored. But with the air fryer, you don't need to preheat. Now, you may have seen mentioned online that it's advised to preheat, but Ninja themselves in the instruction booklet say you don't need to bother. So you don't preheat. You get them straight out of the freezer, put them in, whack them on the bake setting and they cook in 10 minutes and they're amazing. So that for me has been the complete game changer. I love the fact that in 10 minutes flat, I can get them from the freezer to the table in a third of the time. It's brilliant. We also tried dehydrating with this machine. My son has been after a dehydrator for a really long time. He cut up loads of fruit and put it into the dehydrator. It takes a really long time to dehydrate, like eight hours or up to 12 hours. And I took a photo of it at the beginning and I rushed back to see the results at the end. And this is what I saw. Wait, what? They hadn't. 
evaporated entirely in the machine. What had happened is my son had grown impatient and had interrupted the cooking and the dehydrating halfway through and had actually eaten the contents without me knowing. So they were really good, but you know, I can't see us realistically running this for eight hours at a time just to dehydrate some stuff, which we could just buy from the supermarket if we wanted it. So are you still on the fence about whether to buy this Ninja Foodie Dual Zone Air Fryer? Because let me tell you, it is faster than a conventional oven. It is easier to clean than a conventional oven. And it is super useful if you're a family and your family eats at different times of the evening. If you've got one going off to clubs, somebody eating later on in the day, it's absolutely brilliant for heating up small quantities of food quickly. It's been a game changer for me. I love it. And the only downside I can say to this machine and to all air fryers is it does take up a lot of space on the worktop. So you've got to commit that worktop real estate to get one, but it's worth it. So if this video has been useful, then please do hit the like button down below. And if you're new to this channel, I would love to have you join me for more reviews of products for family and home. So in order to do that, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button. Thank you for watching.